How's it going, everyone? Kim Blatty here. So I've been asked to give my opinions on the Twitch drops, and I think it will reflect a lot of other people's opinions as well. But let's just see. So Twitch drops are an opportunity for viewers to watch streams and gain rewards, and these can be things like card kegs, meteorite powder. Um, there are some CD Projekt Red official rewards exclusives like um, trinkets, borders, titles, and uh, cards particular to whoever wins challenger so on the surface i think twitch drops seems like a good idea um it really surprised me came out of nowhere and it just sort of like oh that's nice you know if you watch me you can get some rewards yeah cool now there's a lot of implementation issues um that wasn't clear when i first initially saw it and uh i'd like to just talk about a few of those so the first issue is it does breed the big get bigger and the small stay where they are kind of twitch scenario environment because you need about 100 concurrent viewers in order to have this twitch drop enabled on your channel okay so as someone who, who you know kind of floats between 100 um sometimes it's 60 sometimes it's 100 maybe a tiny bit more sometimes i'm not gonna be able to offer this sometimes i am but there's quite a lot of people below me that don't get anywhere near 100, you know, they don't get to 50. And it means that a lot of viewers, or some viewers, majority, might come onto Twitch, look at some people and say, oh, if I can get rewards from that stream, but I can't get rewards from that stream, then I'm going to go to this person, if they've not got a particular favourite. And I think it's hard enough for new streamers to get noticed as it is, that you don't really need to breed this sort of environment of, I can get, I can get rewards from this guy so let's not go down to and experience this guy and i think there's a lot of cool stuff happening at the minute where i think the gwent streamer community is quite nice at hosting each other and the reddit has got um you know find out a new streamer here with some extra people that are quite low which is nice uh, but this this particular twitch drop doesn't breed that and the way you could fix it is to lower or abolish the concurrent viewership requirement now, there might be a reason why it's 100. You know, if you can't, if you take it off, maybe it's exploitable. You know, you can watch one stream, your own stream maybe, and get loads of rewards. Or there's probably something to do with how we don't quite know how the rewards are given out exactly. So, obviously, every half an hour, you've got a chance to win a reward. We don't quite know if that means that everybody has equal chance. Let's say one in 50 of getting a reward no matter how big or small the chat is you've got 2000 people you've got one in 50 chance every half an hour you've got one person in the chat he's got a one in 50 chance every half an hour i mean that'll probably be the best way for twitch drops to work because then there is no big get bigger smaller get smaller because you watch any stream if the concurrent viewership is abolished and you've got a one in 50 chance or one in whatever or we don't quite know whether it's uh, based on the number of viewers. So a reward is given out every half an hour to one person in the chat. And that depends on the viewers. So if you've got 100 viewers, then it's a 1 in 100 chance you'll get it. If you've got 2,000 viewers, it's a 1 in 2,000 chance you'll get it. And so, I mean, that's really weird because that, that particular system would incentivize going to the lower aspect end of the uh twitch stream so ones that have only just reached 100 you know you'd go to the ones that give you a one in 120 chance to win rather than one in 2000 so both of these methods don't necessarily incentivize going for the highest streamer um, but they do incentivize going for someone who actually has reached the requirement of over 100 so just getting rid of that requirement abolishing it completely and then you know You've got a lot of choice for you then, which is really good. And going for the one that incentivizes everyone's got equal chance of one in a hundred, say, of getting the reward is a much better system than based on how many viewers you've got there. It stops the exploitability of it. So good. The other issue with Twitch drops is I would say it kind of forces a bit of an AFK thing I've heard. So apparently this Twitch drops scenario has already happened in ESL and you know big streams like that and it does absolutely increase the viewership it's, it's already proven to be the case in Gwent where it's pretty much doubled you know people were getting 1000 now they're getting 2000 I used to get like 60 and now I'm getting like 100 or something like that so it's definitely happening 
But apparently, according to other people, um, it forces this AFK model where people go onto a stream to get rewards and they just sit there. You don't have to actually click on anything to order, in order to get the rewards. And so you can just sit watching a stream and, um, you know, artificially boost their numbers while not actually watching. Now, in terms of whether that's a good or bad thing, I, I fail to see much negative from that. Honestly, I mean, if people want to AFK in your stream, then that's their right to do so. They're still there. They're still helping you out as a streamer. Now, some positives to do with people AFK in your stream is, well, first of all, as a CD Projekt Red business, it's good for them. The more people watching Gwent means the numbers are higher. It's higher up on the Twitch list. Maybe you'll get to the front page if there's a lot of viewers. Um, so more legit people are going to come in and try Gwent. It's going to get more exposure and more people who are legit are going to come into streams and they may go to the top stream like i said the big get bigger and the small stay smaller but they will come and you know for cd project red that's good for the gwent community that's good the more people play it the bigger it gets the better it gets and everyone's happy but the afk are not really doing any negatives i don't see they're not ruining the chat which is going to be my next point um they're just sitting there and doing what they want you know i don't see really see an issue with afkers um, as one particular thing. Now, the next issue, like I mentioned, was um, ruining of chat. Now, my chat's great. I love my chat. Shout out to my chat. They're actually very civilized. And although we did get quite a few, you know, exclamation mark drop, what does drop do? How do I activate it and all that? I think that will die down, how much people are not understanding how to use it and how to activate it and how to be part of it, because I think you get whispered um, when you win and no other real indication that is happening but some of these top streams apparently their chat has devolved into massive amounts of twitch drops and it's kind of ruined their chat now it may already be in the case on people who's got 2000 viewers that their chat is kind of meme anyway but i like the fact that it whispers and i like the fact that you know every attempt to try and reduce the chat is taken so you know, the bot shouldn't do an awful lot of spamming and it shouldn't, you know, indicate every time someone's won because that's just going to, you know, it definitely shouldn't have the particular viewers have to type something to check things. Like, I've seen a lot of people type exclamation mark drop and exclamation mark claim. And I swear some of them are debated things. You know, some people are baiting people to write that. I don't know what it is. But someone in my stream, there was a lot of people writing exclamation mark drop doesn't do anything as far as i'm aware unless you get whispered uh, i also try and blacklist it, the word so it's just you know just try and remove all that excess baggage just make it so it just happens it whispers you you look at it it's good you know it's nice you'll be surprised that you've got it but you don't have to do anything else and the chat can be oblivious to when it happens and it just kind of works so as long as twitch drops doesn't really interact with the chat much and the chat doesn't have to interact with the bot and all this and it's just kind of in the background then I think that's 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 good. But at the minute it's definitely becoming apparent that the chat is starting to devolve a little bit, but I think that might come out when people understand what's going on with it. Um and it just sort of gets going itself. And so I think the final issue is VODs. So that's video on demands, where apparently streamers can broadcast their old content. So I could get a stream that I did today restream it okay so it's a video on demand but i'm actually streaming the vod and you know maybe stream other content too so like 24 hour vod streams is something which happened in the esl when twitch drops happened there and it's basically the stream is not there it's just a repeat and you can watch that and get twitch drops as well now i have nothing against people watching vods but I don't really have an issue with them watching VODs and getting Twitch drops from it. I mean, if they went to one of the, you know, I know you can like do video on demand on Twitch, but if someone missed my stream, they can go to my Twitch channel and look at a VOD and watch that. I have no problem with them getting uh, Twitch drops from that, but it it's just about fostering that you restream your VOD and it kind of breeds the 24 hour VOD restreams and you know, it also breeds that AFK business again. And this time, it's 
you're taking viewers away from those that are actually streaming live. And I don't think that should happen. So the VOD thing should probably just be taken away so that people don't start stream restreaming older streams or older content. And people just AFK in there. The chat's not really happening because no one to interact with. And, you know, so I think that I don't mind that happening, but it should just happen on if you watch one of my old VODs, then you've got a chance, you know, but um, yeah, probably should be taken out just so that it prevents that kind of issue. So in general, um, this, I like the idea. Maybe you should just stick it to developers streams and official CD Projekt Red streams. That way you don't, um, you know, you don't have to deal with all this mess. But I mean, that there's not many of those streams. So you're not going to get many kegs and many meteorite powder and many cards and stuff. I do think it works best for CD Projekt Red developer streams and uh, challenger events. But if you want to stick it for the rest of us, then I would be happy to have it. But I think it needs to be an even playing field for everyone so that it doesn't change the environment of Twitch because it's already difficult for people who are lower down. And I think you can't give them an unfair advantage because it just becomes an issue. I think I've covered everything that I'd like to cover in this particular talk. Um, yeah, I think so. Let me know if you've got any ideas. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!